Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Normally, we choose a classic movie from the 80s, 90s, or early 2000s and dissect it with a modern eye to see if it still moves us the way it did as kids. But not today! On this episode, we're going to discuss multiple amazing movies instead of just one. We think you're going to love it, so sit back and enjoy today's episode. Top 5 Winter Movies. Well, we're pretty excited about today's episode, and I'll explain to you why we're doing this shortly. But first, it's time to introduce the team. My name is Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two dudes that love cold weather. <sighs> Sean Pryor and AJ Benz, how the heck are you? It's I'm, true, I do. I'm about done with it, man. <laughs> really? Already? Yeah, you're already I'm, <laughs> I'm moving to Arizona, Texas. I'm I'm getting the hell out of here. There's a point, there's a point in the winter where it stops being cute. You know? Yeah. Oh, look at the oh. oh the snowfall. Oh, oh, I can see my breath. Oh, <sighs> and <laughs> <laughs> then you wear the, the then you wear the wrong shoes. Yeah, because it's the only ones you have, <laughs> and you step in a huge <laughs> pile of slush and ice. Yeah, and just gets all up in you. Uh, there's there's the eight seasons of of Iowa. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you know, first winter, <laughs> first winter, fall spring, fall spring, slush Second. season. <laughs> Very um, sec, very big winter. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Extremely disappointing winter. Yeah. Fall, fall, spring. That's a big one. Yeah, uh, it usually happens right around um, like at the end of January is when you're just like, I'm yes. done with this. Yep. This so is bullshit. I thought we were gonna talk about this with a loving kind of mentality oh. of winter. So I, this is top five reasons we hate winter movies. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I think oh. we got the assignment right. These are the top five movies to watch while you're snowed in. Got yes, you. okay. Oh, I like and that. It makes you feel comfy. Yes. So here's what we're doing today. Top five lists and ranking movies is such a cool way to talk about a lot of movies at once, provide some great conversations. We've done a number of these episodes now. We started with top five summer movies. It was a hit. We followed that up with top five fall movies in October of 21. Then we did top five rom-coms in January, top five movies from 1985 in April, and top five movie soundtracks back in July, and we're back at it today with top five winter movies but before we dive in don't forget your task for being a confused breakfast lover leave us a five-star review on your podcast platform sign up for our patreon to get tons of amazing perks voting on upcoming episodes weekly bonus audio patreon.com slash confused breakfast subscribe watch us on youtube buy merch everything you need confusedbreakfast.com. but most importantly tell your friends that is the way we grow. Don't say like, mm. "Oh, this is just for me." No, no. Share it. Share, share it out it there with the world. December is sharing your love for things with your friends and family. So share it. That's right. The best way to spread holiday cheer is sharing confused breakfast for all to hear. For their ear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to their ear. Yes. Gift it. Yeah. Gift them a Patreon thing. Gift them. You know. Gift, yeah. They'll they'll get all the show. That's right. Use us as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, fellas, <laughs> let's jump in. So again, we are doing top five winter <laughs> movies to start. Tell me, like, what's your when you did when you made this list? What was your criteria for for a winter movie? Like, how does that? How are you using this criteria? There has to be snow, I believe, um, or just extreme cold. Um, maybe a sense of isolation. I really like about these movies, um, and uh, maybe kind of like an ensemble cast is is kind of weirdly a. Um, a, a, a box that's ticked for me in these okay. movies. Um, yeah, and mostly, like I was saying at the top, just um, if you're snowed in, this is the kind of movie you want to watch, you know, like uh, 10 Little Indi- Indians for the thing, you know, that kind of thing where it's just like you're you're huddled in a, uh, a space with a group of people right. and there's no way out. Yeah, Sean's first picks, Lord of the Flies. There it is. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, it, it's But for me, when you say winter... Uh, around here, it's got to be cold. Yeah, it's cold. So I just want, I get you got to feel the cold. You got to yes. know that it's cold. You gotta, you gotta understand like, oh, they got, they got snow in their shoes. Oh yeah, <laughs> that that happened in that little shot and scene. Those are the kinds of things. Like I want to feel the cold. I want it to be like. That's what I want. Yeah, I don't want to see like the Hallmark Christmas movie where no. where it is very snowy mm. and cold, but they're just like, hee, 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 
<laughs> no, no. I want you to be terrified with how cold this is and be going through the hardships of winter. You yeah, know? right. Because like, because we're used to that. We live in Iowa. It, it gets we get those polar vortexes that come on down like this, you know. And yeah. It's cold as shit, and we get a lot of snow here, and I know we got friends further up north in other countries. Maybe our friends down in Texas, Florida. I'm wondering if you guys feel the same way about winter movies, if you like to watch movies like this because it like makes you think about what it would be like. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Well, that is our criteria. So the only rule, really, that we have when we do these top five lists is that we can't use any movies we've already talked about in a review episode. Um, you know, because some of these I think would make our list definitely. Here are a few of them that we've already done. Grumpy Old Men, we just did. Red Dawn, definitely a winter movie. You get that sure. really oh, yeah. cold feeling there. The Shining is probably number one on many people's lists when you're thinking it's about winter mine. and isolation. Uh, Groundhog Day, that would have been on my list for sure. I think mm-hmm. Groundhog Day's got that that repeating like every day of winter. It's like, oh, it's cold and snowy yeah. again. Weird, you know. Uh, cool Runnings, Mighty Ducks, Christmas Story, Just Friends, Christmas Vacation, Home Alone. Those are all definitely Christmas mo- or sorry, winter movies, but we're not going to talk about them on our top five today. That's right. right. So let's do, uh, let's do some honorable mentions. I'll give you a few. I, I feel weird saying this, but I, I've watched it probably three times now, and it, t- it checks the box. <laughs> it just didn't make my top five. Frozen. Frozen, oh. fr- no, not like Frozen, Frozen, like Frozen where they're stuck on the ski lift. Oh. That's, that's, that's one of my honorable mentions as well. My God, yeah, like I, I hate, it. I hate that movie, but I love it, but I hate it, but yeah. I don't know why I can't turn it off. Yeah, it, it's it's like legitimately like one of the most original movies of that like disaster kind of thing. Yes. Like you know, like there's speed, and you were on a speeding bus with Ugh. with a bomb. This one, you're just stuck on a chairlift. There's nobody around, and there's fucking wolves trying to get you. <sighs> that sounds terrible. It is. You have to you have to watch that. I also got uh, Empire Strikes Back. I feel like that's Definitely. got that's got some winter vibes to it. Um, for me, you got to have some uh, sports movies. You got to have hockey movies. Miracle, Slapshot. Those are big winter movies for me. Even Inception. It's got that winter scene when they're diving deep down and it's the cold and they're storming the fortress. Yeah. Um, and finally, pretty much the entire Dark Knight trilogy has winter vibes to it. Mm. Okay. There's, you know, the first one, Batman Begins, you've got the snow, they're on the mountain. You've yeah. got there's a lot of snow features and winter features in those movies. So I, I think they fit the criteria. One hundred percent. But those are my honorable mentions. AJ, what about you, man? I got a bunch. I'll just run through them real fast for you. Uh, cool Runnings, um, obviously can't say that one. Um, I, I would have to say in, Into the Wild, that's oh, another definitely. one. Anything from John Hughes. Okay. Anything from okay. John Hughes, guys, like literally anything. Um, the Edge. You guys nice. have seen The, seen the Edge? Seen yes. um, and, uh, oh, let's see. There was a, there's, I don't know. The Harry Potter movies yeah. are kind of in that vibe for me for I'm some reason. You. Like every time you see like that great hall and it's like decked out for like, uh, the holidays yeah or that's true going home for the holidays or something Ugh. i'm like oh yeah mm. Mm. coco and, and <laughs> harry potter yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> i don't know that's about that's about what i got okay. i would say yeah. I, got you, a, Sean? I got a few um the thing is 100 percent on there i wonder if we're gonna do that sometime i wonder soon. if we're gonna do that sometime <laughs> um the revenant is a oh my god i forgot about really that. cool mm. like wilderness movie the way that i i like that movie but I think I like the way that it's shot more than I do than the actual content of the movie. I agree 100 percent with you. It's 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 just like the story wise. I'm like, mm, okay, I can get behind it, and you know the little subtle themes. But other than that, I just love the winter aspect in that movie and the way that it's filmed. The way it looks. Mm. Um, there's a movie called The Black Coat's Daughter, or it used to be called February, so definitely winter. Um, it's just this weird kind of ghost satanic movie, uh, done by Osgood Perkins. Um. It's just a weird, weird w- movie, but you can definitely feel the cold in that movie. Uh, check that out if you uh, have not. Mm. Um, there's a movie called The Chilly Scenes of Winter. It's kind of a romantic comedy. Um, who's the dad from Home Alone? Jo- uh, John. No. John something. Um, I can't remember. That so guy. Yeah. He stars in it, and it's a great, great kind of romantic comedy. Mm. Um, there's a movie called Weirdsville. That's an indie movie with uh, Scott Speedman and... Uh, it's just a comedy about these kind of drug addicts who are trying to kick the habit, but also trying to pay back this drug dealer. And it's uh, based in like um, Saskatchewan or something like that. Mm. It's really fun, really cool. Um, I revisited it because it was a childhood movie of mine and uh, still holds up. So check that one out. And that's all I got for Honorables. 
Well, what do you say? Uh, I'll start us off on number five. I'm going to give you my number five. We'll go through the whole thing. We'll come all the way down to one. My number five, I already told you I do. I got to have a hockey movie. Like, hockey is winter, you know? And so mine's Mystery Alaska. Nice. Ooh, yes. It, it's 1999 movie. Russell Crowe, Burt Reynolds, Mary McCormick, Hank Azaria, lots more. Feel-good movie about the best sport in the entire world, yep. hockey. Um, there are so many other hockey movies to choose from, like I already mentioned. But if we're talking about, like, the winter feeling of hockey plus just winter, it's this. It's that skating the river, like that epic shot of the dude. Like, who doesn't want to strap on some skates mm. and skate this w windy, frozen river? And the shots of the, of the black ice because mm -hmm. it's frozen and... I, I don't know. Everybody playing hockey in town. Everybody skating, coming together. This movie is not that great overall. Like it's pretty cheesy. It's I've been pretty seen it forever. It's uh, I, I rewatched it again last week, and it's still like yeah. But you know, it just it's the most predictable <laughs> cheesy movie you've ever watched. But I just like it for a winter vibe. I, yeah. I do really like the way that it's like shot and put together. Definitely. And it, it is like you say, it's a feel good movie. It's a great watch for winter, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. my number five. Sean, Sweet. what about you, man? I will go with a movie called The Ice Storm, uh, directed by Ang Lee, starring this, – this is just, this is what I mean by, like, stacked cast. This is Sigourney Reaver, Kevin Klein, Christina Ricci, Toby Mulgaire, Elijah Wood, and Joan Allen, among many, many more. Uh, this is just a, a, about more, more or less a kind of family drama in the 70s and the kind of in, – in a little bit of a small town – um, these families all culminate together during, I, I believe like Thanksgiving into Christmas. And it's more of just like a slice of life of like the troubled marriage and, uh, infidelity. And, uh, with Christina Ricci's character, she's kind of discovering her sexuality, uh, during the course of this movie. And, um, Elijah Wood's trying to get to his family the entire time. And so we cut back to him a lot. It's more of like a, uh, kind of a segmented, uh, here's this story and here's this story kind of vignettes, but yeah. they all kind of culminate together. I love it. And it's um, during an ice storm, why, why it's called the ice storm. So they're all kind of uh, either outside trying to get in or they are stuck inside. Yes. And like, there's a scene where there's like literally a key party and they all have to be inside. Like even, even if anybody's uncomfortable with that, they, you know, they have to stay there. And so it's really interesting. And um, I, I like Ang Lee's movies a lot. And I think this is my favorite of his. Mm. Yeah. Number five for Sean, the Ice Storm. AJ, what do you got, man? Uh, keep in mind, I don't necessarily have these in a specific order. Oh, I don't great. know if you guys do. Yes. I do not. You guys are 100%. like five through one. <laughs> yeah, like, that oh, was five. That I just was, gave you five. That was it. Like, oh, man. Okay. Well, <laughs> one of my top five <laughs> is... I'm going to I'm going to start off with uh, the the day after tomorrow. OK, nice. <laughs> yes. I, sh I you know what? I would have put this on my list, but I had a feeling you would put it. on. Yeah, it's winter yes. in June. It's, uh, <laughs> it's extreme winter. <laughs> exactly. Um, it is. It's the I love Dennis Quaid. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm a, such a big fan of his. And this is uh, I, I don't know, something about this movie that uh, this it's it's in the same vein as like. How, why I like, like zombie movies and stuff. It's like okay. the test. It's the, Ugh. oh, it's the, <laughs> oh, no. There's a big storm. We get all locked in or we're all snowed in and like everything is just desolate at yes. this point. And um, desolation is, is for some reason very <laughs> fascinating to me. <laughs> and I don't know why. When you, uh, when you get about 10 inches of snow, you know why. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, there's just a lot of great scenes in this movie, like of them trekking through. They have to like find their way back into New York, and then they realize they're on top of New York, yeah. <laughs> essentially. And uh, like it's it's like 20 feet of snow <laughs> that they're standing on top of, and ice, and uh, like falling through the mall. They're in, when uh, uh, who who is it? Uh, J Jake Jill no, yeah, yeah Jake Jill and uh, he's. He's like it, they're hunkered down in like this library mm -hmm. and they're like eating they're eating breaking into the vending machines to <laughs> eat something and just try to stay alive and and nourish themselves it's there's a lot of great scenes in this of cold isolation and and kind of just being a desolate place 
and if, I love it. If you had to, <laughs> that's in the same vein as San Andreas and um, yeah. Yellowstone and all these like crazy, unbelievable disaster movies. I think but yeah. like Independence Day, Ro- I think Roland Emmerich yeah. made that movie. So, but for some reason, like I think this is my my favorite of all those. Like it's yeah. it's annoyingly like oh my god it's global warming but that means cold and you know <laughs> it's all that but it's still really good like yes it's a good movie yes 100 percent. i love it so much I, i've gotta i've gotta go back and watch it again here soon yeah yeah well good thing winter just started oh good hey <laughs> all we're doing is making a list for you guys to yeah. watch winter <laughs> yeah, movies good point, point. <laughs> uh we got an executive producer on today's shows he's gonna give us his five it is our boy bud larson thank nice. you for being here man we love having you as an executive producer. Uh, oh, yeah. His number five is Reindeer Games. Oh, nice. Oh. Okay. I, I, Dude, I don't know if I've ever actually seen Reindeer Games. He said um, he said it's about a group of Santas robbing a casino. How do you get more Christmas and winter time <laughs> than that? I think he, I think he's right about that. That was uh, – two. Th- have you guys seen that? It was 2000. Yeah. Was it uh, Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck. Uh, actually, Charlize Theron. Yeah. Know, Gary yeah. Sinise. Yes. I don't know if I have seen this. Actually. I got to go back and watch that. I, I think that was one of those movies where I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'll eventually watch that. And uh-huh. I just never did. Right. Yeah, I, I think it was one of those that I thought as a as a kid or like when I was younger, I thought to myself, oh, um, it's about reindeer games. And Rudolph. So like Rudolph <laughs> and they don't let him play in those reindeer <laughs> games. I've never seen this Rankin Bass film before. So it's like turns out. No, it's Ben Affleck and Gary Sinise. Oh, Lieutenant Dan. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you can't watch it, dude. The guy from Armageddon? <laughs> yeah, awesome. <I> <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, my number four, it has to be The Gray. Yes. The Gray. Is there is there more of an isolated, freezing cold, terrifying winter movie than this? I mean, this should opinion. have been your number one, and I think it's the show's number one. We had a big argument, not an argument, but like a disagreement. Argument. It was on all of our lists. We love this movie. And I, I have to say, if there is a movie that you want to check out uh, on any of our lists, check out The Gray first because mm. it's so good. Do you think this never – was this ever a big deal? Like, was no. this Did it make a lot of money? Like, is it just kind of a more of an indie film? It didn't really go anywhere. Joe Carnahan directed it. He did, like, movies like Smoke and Aces and uh, a movie called Narc. Uh, really good filmmaker, but th- I think this is his best film, and it didn't get the recognition it deserved. 2011, it's Liam Neeson and basically just a bunch of nobodies, in my opinion. Uh, but like he, <laughs> he's the Liam Neeson you know. Yeah, right. he has a very, I have a very <laughs> specific set of st- skills. That I'm going. It's like, well, there's nine of us wolves. <laughs> okay, so do what you will. But there's only nine of us, I guess, against your skills. You could say that wolves have a particular set of skills, too. <laughs> oh, just, good Lord, do they? That is just killing. Yeah. I don't know. Th- this is one of those movies where I'm just like, I mean, we won't spoil anything for you if you haven't seen it, but like, like I tend to root more for animals in these types of movies. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, fuck you guys. Like, Let these wolves take you. It's yeah. your fault. You're playing with <laughs> down. It's your fault. Yeah. You're in their territory. Your territory. That's what you're doing. Well, j- just to give a little sting to, to the audience to uh, maybe go out and see it, uh, Liam Neeson is uh, on this like oil rig, Russian or like they're somewhere. just like in way northern Alaska or Some, something like something that. Like yeah. that. And he's his job is literally to protect these workers from wolves who are passing by, and he'll just snipe them. And so they are on a plane, and the plane goes down, and they have to try and survive along with these wolves trying to get them. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's your little little pitch for it. I, I will spoil one scene because I this is one of the scenes in this movie is stuck in my head forever. And I think it's one of my favorite. If we'd ever do like top five scenes for a movie, this will be in there. Mm. Um, oh, great! It's during. Wow. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> it's during a like the plane just went down. There's like maybe a handful of survivors, and Liam Neeson's one of them. And there's one person who is ex- like mortally wounded. And this guy is like, "Well, what's going on? What, we need to get help. We need to get help, right?" And Liam Neeson is literally, <laughs> and everyone's around him. Liam Neeson like has him in his hands. He's like, "You're going to die." And he's like, no, no, I'm gonna get better. He's like, he's like, wait, 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 no, 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 I, no, no. He's like, no, it's it just, and he just kind of talks to him. He's like, who do you love? Who are you thinking of right now? And it's a, this group of people along with Liam Neeson talking this guy through his death, and he eventually dies. It's the most harrowing, sad scene mm. I have ever seen in my life, and it, I, for that scene alone, this movie is pr- on masterpiece level for me. I mm. love it so much. The, the look of the film, the color grading, the snow, the the scenes where the wolves' eyes are popping out oh, with God. fire reflection. Yeah. This is 
one of the best winter movies of all time. Go yes. out and watch it. Yeah, it's it's like The Edge, but Wolves not a, not not a bear. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. Sean, what's your number four, man? Let's go with. Um, I'm gonna go Cold Prey. This is a horror movie. This is actually one of my oh. uh, <laughs> one of my favorite slashers of all time. Um, I believe it's like maybe Sweden or something. The filmmaker's name is Roar Olfig. Maybe Dana. I don't know. I don't know what it is. A uh, foreign movie about these uh, snowboarders, a group of friends um, who go snowboarding, and one of them, what wouldn't you know, breaks their leg, <gasps> and um, they have to kind of find help for him, and they they stumble upon this abandoned uh, hotel. That's just literally just kind of left there in the middle of this of these mountains in the snowstorm. No roads anywhere. It's all just covered with snow. So they go in and find uh, shelter there and have this guy rehabilitate. And like, well, we're here, so we'll just stay for the night. And there's snacks, there's booze. We'll hang out. And uh, in the morning, we'll get someone to go out and try and find some help. Uh, but uh, wouldn't you also know is that there's a huge man staying there and he's psychotic. Wouldn't you know? Um, and so it's Wait, a, a slasher movie about this guy who's s- simultaneously killing these teens off, and uh, I love it. It's it's really great. Um, it's like The Shining if it was a slasher, pretty much. Nice. Um, so there's your pitch for it. I love it. Go check it out. Cold Prey. AJ, number four, cold. what you got, man? Cold Prey. Cold Prey. Well, Sounds like a new type of cold-pressed coffee. <laughs> yeah, it does. Cold Prey. Ooh, Cold Prey by Nestle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nestle. Bro, <laughs> Nestle. Can I get, a, can I get that in a, a venti, please? Ooh. <laughs> the, other, the other day I went to like a normal coffee shop and I said I want a tall. Yeah. And because I meant like give me as much coffee as you can, they're like, wait, do you mean small like Starbucks? I'm like, no, I mean t- the tallest cup of coffee it's I can get. The biggest thing <laughs> you can give me. I'm not in Starbucks. Yeah. I can say tall here and that right. means a lot. Do I look like a Starbucks <laughs> frequenter? Yes. I guess. Is, that, is, yes. That, is that who I am? Does it look Shoot. like I'm the type of guy that walks into a Starbucks and gets in line be- behind 30 teenage girls yeah. ordering <laughs> things with sprinkles in it? Yeah. No, I fucking don't. Okay, continue. Sorry. Cold prey. Yes, I'd like some sugar with a splash of coffee. That'd be great. <laughs> Bye, Nestle. It's a uh, <laughs> Coffee with cream? You okay, buddy? I'm good. Just give me speaking a coffee a, with whipped cream on top. Coming from horror and speaking of Starbucks, <laughs> I'm going to give you the holiday. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> this is my favorite. This is what I love the most about you, too. Sean's like, oh, it's a bit of an indie horror film that no one's ever seen. AJ's like, the holiday. The holiday. Black, Black. Black. Cameron Diaz and Jack Black. <laughs> Jude Law is. I love you guys. <laughs> The hunky sweetheart who cries. <laughs> uh, he's sweet and sensitive. And sensitive, but strong. Look at him chop lumber. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> so, uh, like it's it's. I know it's always like shocking, and and you for some reason over the years have just gained this like weird appreciation for these. It's this is right in the vein of. Uh, like just friends, uh, yep. With like Hallmark movie vibes. It's, it's Hallmark a, movie, but like good. But thank God there's production value. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's even like a Hallmark movie. I would say this is a Hallmark card brought to life. Brought to Ooh. life. <laughs> yes. like that's Ooh. what this movie is. And you know what? It's funny because it even kind of plays on this a little bit because she, Cameron Diaz, basically plays a like a she she helps on commercials uh, or, or helps uh, on commercials. trailers. For movies, yes. right? She she like produces them, and she's having like a fallout with, uh, or not having luck with men. Has a fallout, and then uh, what's her name? I can't think of it. The other actress. The other her actress. Name? Why yeah. can't oh, I think it's of Kate it? Winslet. Kate Winslet. Kate Kate Winslet. Winslet. And um, she has a very similar situation going on in England, and sh- uh, Cameron Diaz is in L.A. Well, they decide to take a holiday and switch places. House swap classic situation. <laughs> basically, yeah, basically Airbnb each other's houses. I'd like to do that someday with some random person. I'd be fun. down. It's a fun idea. Um, yeah. And uh, But then a killer comes ah! in. But then, <laughs> Sorry. But then there's a psycho living in the basement. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just welcome to crappy holidays. <laughs> hey! uh, and so... But th- th- so you've got that. And I love it because Cameron Diaz can't get out of her own head. And she has like the monologue of the trailer. It's like it's like Cameron Diaz just can't catch a break. <laughs> and she's like playing this over and over in her head. And I love it so much. But then this is honestly also, oddly enough, one of my favorite Jack Black roles. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I other than Airborne. Uh, and other than Airborne, of course, <laughs> yeah. of course. Or um other than uh, Waterworld. Well, <laughs> um but <laughs> damn. <laughs> It's deep, a deep cut. That's a very deep cut. <laughs> we wow. just have to do that move and get it out of your Let's system. Let's just get it out of your system. Well, hey, Jack Black's come a long way. We're going to um, do it from your pool. Don't it, worry. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> um, but I love his role in this. I, For some reason, it's such a charming movie. It is. And it's it's a really comfortable watch, and you feel for these these people, and even, for, even though you probably shouldn't. And, um, yeah, I love watching yeah. it. It's a very good feel-good movie, right on the cusp of that Hallmark vibe, And uh, but it's got some great actors and actresses in it. Uh, Eli, Eli Wallach is in it. And yes. He's, he's kind of, like, uh, shepherding uh, Kate Winslet through, yep. like, the trials and tribulations of L.A. Yeah. I like their their um, uh, interactions a lot. I know. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 great. Yeah. Uh, our boy Bud Larson, his number four, he's going die hard. He's saying Mike said it wasn't a Christmas movie, which at this point <laughs> wow. we are not we are not sure. By this point, we will know what the official vote of the smartest people on earth, our Patreon members are. Right. Patreon.com slash confused breakfast. So we don't know it yet, but when this comes out, we will be able to say whether it is a Christmas movie or not. Right now I'm going to say that he's correct. It's not a Christmas movie. But he's saying it does take place during the winter holiday. There's trees, there's snow. Most importantly, people blowing up buildings. John McClain gives us the best movie quote of all time. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Mm. But that is the important thing we're trying to say here is like whether we determine this is a Christmas movie or not, if this is something you love to watch during the winter and during Christmas, right. Do it. You can do it. Yeah. You're allowed to. It's funny. I'm, it's your I, life. I'm, well, that's weird. It's weird. You have agency. <clears throat> yeah. Free will. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. I agree. Like I, I watch Scorsese, Scorsese movies. Of course. Um, <laughs> during during the winter time, I love yeah. watching gangster movies during that. They're not necessarily overtly winter, but I, I love doing it anyway. So yeah. I yep. uh, there totes. you go. Whatever. Totes. Totes. Uh, my number three: Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Uh, I know that that might be kind of a bit of a head scratcher, but if you don't remember, this was uh, 2004. Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet. Um, She's back. The first, yeah, the first like non crazy Jim Carrey role. You know, up to this point, he's like, yeah, Truman Show, and might yeah. be myself and Irene. And then all of a sudden, I remember seeing this going, "Ooh, is this like an introspective kind of sad?" I mean, this is in theory kind of a, a sad movie. This is a couple meets, falls in love, and then tries to forget that they ever knew each other through like a process of uh, what was that process? It was just like was mental. Just, yeah. Hi just like gnosis. Yeah. Like, a, like I think they did like a whole like weird, like yeah. kind of ele electrodes and stuff on oh. the mind. Just like literally erase erasing a person, memories, racing memories yeah. and it completely erasing each other from each other's memories. And it, winter movies for me always have like the introspective nature to them. It's a time to reflect. Uh, I've just always loved this movie. It's a cold tent movie for sure. You can feel it. They are always wearing like, coats and sweaters uh running the the such a weird scene they're running down the beach playing on the beach but it's cold and snowy yeah. no one ever shows a beach when there's snow on it because yeah. there are beaches in the world where there will be snow and cold weather um <clears throat> i love that scene the walking out onto the ice that iconic shot of them yes. laying on their backs on the ice there's like mm. a, that crack big old crack yeah. right next to him uh, that is a major major winter movie for me not only for temperature wise and looks, but also just the sad introspective reflection of mm -hmm. winter. I mean, that it's a big one for me. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I don't know that I've actually seen you all have of that to, movie. Man. Oh, it's great. You'd love it. Yeah. I'll, Charlie I'll check Kaufman. That one out. Um, great soundtrack, too. Yeah. I, one of the lines in there, I think it's uh, more towards the middle or something like that, but uh, she's he's like trying to get her back. Like he, did, he, he regrets his decision, so he's like trying to get her back through these memories. And... Um, He's like, I, I don't, I don't want to lose you again. She's like, you're gonna get tired of me. He's like, we'll do it together. <laughs> mm. I don't care. We'll get tired of each other together. You know, it's just like, it's really nice. <laughs> Elijah Wood plays a pretty interesting character. In yeah. That uh, <laughs> what Hulk? What's his name? Yeah. Uh, what the uh, the new Hulk? The new Hulk. Oh, uh, Banner. Bruce Banner. No. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what, what are, are you, we talking uh, about? The new Hulk. Yeah. What's his goddamn name? Oh, who, who? plays him? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Uh. Uh, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, he's, yes. in, he's <laughs> in it. That's all I had to say. Ah, Mark. Uh, thanks, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Sean. Sean oh, what's, now I'll, what's thank your, you for helping me struggle through that. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> what's your number three? And Sean? yeah, y y he's in it. So, uh, <sighs> um, let's do this. I'm gonna go the Hateful Eight. That's okay. it. Move on. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. I uh, well. Yes. This reason why I love this is I went on a bus ride 
uh, <laughs> to Chicago. Okay. Uh, to the Music Box Theater, one of the greatest theaters on earth. Yes. And I saw the Roadshow edition of the Hateful Eight in 70 millimeter film. Projected 70 millimeter film. 70 millimeter is like the widest you could ever see a movie in. Okay. Um, I I had such a great time. We we went with a bunch of other fucking nerds uh, <laughs> to to see this <laughs> picture. Picture. <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> I, I, I I'll tell you what I'm picturing real okay, fast yeah, yeah. is I picture <laughs> I picture Sean who is a nerd. Yes. Also sitting in this room full of other people. You'd be like, fucking nerd. <laughs> 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 no, it, they are my brethren. They are they uh, from film scene in Iowa City. They, they we all did it because I, of them. I pictured the the school bus from Trick or Treat, and all of them had masks <laughs> on. And they're all just like, yeah, all, yeah, just yeah. all like, wear cowboy hats or something. <laughs> 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 um, we were watching Quentin Tarantino movies the whole way down there and the whole way back. Um, this is the the like the kind of road show edition like pamphlet you get. When you go to one of these, oh. it's like they in seventy millimeter films. There was like an extravaganza, so you got like uh, like programs pretty much. Mm. And so in the roadshow edition, there's an intermission in the in the middle of the movie. And if you can imagine what scene, it just kind of there's like a huge twist, and that uh, was the intermission right there. Um, I just love it. It's literally the thing, but a western uh, done by Quentin Tarantino. And uh, it's it's based off you know like the ten little Indians, ten little Native Americans, um, <laughs> kind of stories like that. And like I said, it's it's the isolation and it's the there's the whole mystery of people may not be who they say they are. And oh, I, I love that aspect of the film. And uh, yeah, I it definitely my experience of the movie has informed my love of it. So uh, I definitely love it for that reason too. Hey, Flay, you AJ number three, what you got, man? I'll tell you what I got. I am going to do, yeah, 30 Days of Night. Yeah, man. This cool. might be a surprise to some folks. Yes, very much. Josh Hartnett, I think, is great in this movie. And this is the great combination of, like, borderline kind of in the zombie vibe, but it's vampires, and people are like, um, like the, it, the whole basis of it is up in Alaska, um, a town, like, it goes dark for 30 days during the winter. Do they actually name the town? Is it Barrow, Barrow, Alaska? Is that what it is? Do they actually use Barrow for that? Okay. And so, yes, it's a small town, just a little place in uh, Alaska, and everybody's preparing for the night, like, the long long night. And this is also where these vampires essentially come to hunt and and basically (laughs) feed. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really fun. It's a lot of, man, it's like the anxiety trip for, it's just crazy that you have the isolation, but it's not from just the cold. It's the isolation that you are trying to isolate yourself. Not that you're trying to, uh, not that you, you are caught by the weather. You're trying to keep things out, you Mm -hmm. know, and keep out those vampires and hide from them. And it's terrifying. Uh, who is the who's who's one of those uh, one of the main vampires? Danny Houston. Danny Houston. He's like the head head vampire. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. It's just <laughs> like oh my so lord. <laughs> so yeah. Well, when you think of winter, you think about the further north you go, mm-hmm. the, the lower the daylight you get during the day, and you think about darkness a lot mm-hmm. in winter time. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's it gets dark here now around like in Iowa, it gets starts getting dark around four o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know, and so we uh, we just deal with it, yeah, and you, you just go gotta on. keep on Shit. going on. Yep. And I imagine like when you just have thirty days of straight night. You just got to keep going on. Just, oh, we got to work. We got to do this. We got to do that. And now we can't because we have to hype the vampires. <laughs> yeah. That's out of, fine. Out of all the horror movies in the goddamn world, AJ. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one you like. You've had this on a list before. Too, I have. That personally, <laughs> between you and I. Yeah. Um, it's just shocking that a vampire movie with blood. Uh huh. Bloods and blood and blood and bloods and mm. bloods and bloods. Mm. All over the place. Monsters. Yeah. Indeed. This is your horror movie of choice? Yeah. 
It's weird. I have these. I have all these weird ones that kind of keep popping up. I think like you know the crazies is another one. I don't know what it is. It's like the chase or it's that that running away, that you hiding, like, run and hide kind of thing. You like vampire movies and or right. I mean like zombie movies, zombie like that movies. kind of isolation. Yep, I do. I nice. I I, like I have a dream that uh, you know when you guys are both like ninety two years old, AJ goes first. And AJ's on his deathbed. And no, he, I, no, he I no, can't AJ, have that. No, AJ, you're gonna go soon after. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, you're in your 90s. You don't even know what's going on. You shit yourself, and it's yeah. fine. But AJ's on his deathbed, and he waits for Sean, and everybody's like, Sean, Sean, your your son Harrison's like, Dad, Sean, Sean, Sean. came. He made it. He made the long Sean trip, and Sean walks in. He's like, AJ, you've been my best friend of all time. And AJ goes, I have one thing to tell you before I go. I've loved horror movies all my <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved, I've watched every horror movie, but uh, telling the, you I hate him was my favorite what, thing. <laughs> was one of the greatest joys of my. <laughs> and, and now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to talk about it with you. <laughs> you son of a bitch! How dare you? Uh, That'll be my last word. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's my and dream. And that's that's, that's what ends up killing Sean. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes. And the, my last words will be John Hughes sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and it's just two dead old guys and your son going, "What the fuck? What the hell just happened?" <laughs> it's like, what's the matter with these guys? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Bud Larson's number three. He says, "Coming to America." Nice, okay. Classic yeah. Eddie Murphy movie where he and Arsenio Hall play four different roles each. Akeem escapes in an arranged marriage. Akeem goes to find women that will love him for who he is, not what he is. Another great scene is in the barbershop where the four guys do nothing but argue over who the greatest <laughs> boxer of all time is. In the end, he finds his true love. I, He's right. Like You do get that. Um, I, th I think of cities a lot. Yeah. Big cities in wintertime a lot. You know, sometimes that is kind of a vibe. You get the country winter, but you also get the big city winter vibe. You yeah. know, and yeah. I think he's right on this one. I, I totally agree. One of my it's, just, it's the whole joke in the movie, but he's from a different country and he goes to New York to find his queen, so he goes to Queens. Queens. <laughs> I fucking love that. Yes. It's simple, so simple good. joke in his finest. Yeah. It's it's yeah. It, it was like a coin flip between the Queens and somewhere else. I, it might have been like over in LA, Los Angeles, I think. Yeah. Or like angels, or yeah, 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 and he's like, well, going to Queens. Going to Queens. I um, coming to America might be my favorite Eddie Murphy movie of all I, time. It's up there for me, uh, for sure. Uh, we will, we, we will, will be covered. Not before uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, yeah, true. well, I, I, I really do enjoy it. I love the cold aspect of it. Um, yeah, I think that's a great choice, man. Absolutely. Yeah. My number two was very hard to not put it as number one, um, but I'm just going to leave it where it's at. It's Hot Tub Time Machine. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, okay. listen, listen. 2010, John Cusack, Rob Codry, Chevy Chase, Crispin Glover, Craig Robinson. This was one of those, movie, those classic movies that I'm like, I'm not watching a movie called Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like same thing with uh, a lot of what was the... Um, there, there's been so many movies where I've gone, I'm just, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. This sounds stupid. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. And I finally did it, and I fell majorly in love with this movie. If you're, if you're talking about wintertime for me, it's taking trips to go to, to ski villages and to go to Breckenridge. And going skiing with a group of people is one of the coolest things that you can do in wintertime with your friends and your family. And that's what they do in this movie. It's absolutely hilarious. It's heartfelt. Like... There's a great message in this movie of like looking to your past too hard, you know, and it, can you change that? Can you not change that? And it's got all the elements of winter that I love. I, I think this is one of the greatest movies ever that's very underlooked. Like, mm -hmm. I think this is comedy and heartfelt and awesomeness all packed into one. And it's definitely one of my favorite winter movies. I agree. Uh -huh. I agree with you, man. And I think Rob Corddry is Still, Cordry, Cordry? How do you Cordry. Say? Cordry. I think he's still underrated. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And he's not in enough. And this is like w around the time where he was doing this character a lot. Like yes. the, the outlandish yeah. best friend kind of who's like fucking up their lives. Kind of, you know, who is not who hasn't grown up yet. That mm -hmm. character in those comedies, he, he was becoming more of that. But I think he's just as he's better than that. Yeah. I think he's uh, more, maybe even more of a leading man. And in movies like uh, The Way Way Back, I love him in that. Um, yeah, I think he makes that movie. And the rest of the cast is amazing as well. Obviously, hell yeah, yeah. Number two, Sean, what are you thinking for yours? I'm gonna go with the remake, the Americanized version of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. 
by David Fincher. Uh, this has Daniel Craig, Rooney Mara, Stellan Skarsgård, and it's based off the the series of novels by Stieg Larsson. Um, I love movies about research. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I don't know why. So there's an underlying uh, murder mystery here. Uh, this this guy hires Christopher Plummer hires Daniel Craig uh, to look into this unsolved murder of one of his family members, um, and he has him stay on his like huge complex of buildings that he owns, and it's the dead of winter in uh, like Sweden or something like that. And um, he employs uh, Rooney Mara's character, the girl with the dragon tattoo, uh, to help him out in researching and going to libraries and on the computer and going to get this information from this cop in this city. I love like central mysteries like that, but I love even watching characters on computers or like looking through libraries. For some reason, it gets me. And for some reason, in the winter, it gets me even more. Um, it's, it's such a really, it's just a really fucking cool. Uh, murder mystery that unfolds uh, in a very, very satisfying way, and it's told by David Fincher. I mean, come on, David Fincher is one of our, decent. our our best filmmakers we have. Um, <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. Uh, yeah, I I love it. I love the way it's it's told, and I love the way it's shot. Uh, very cool. Love it. It's a great movie. It's uh, it's uh, tough at some points, but you know, it's uh, it is a great movie. Oh, also. Uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, one of the best, one of the best scores. Ever. Oh. I love the music in this. They are such a good team. They won the Oscar for his movie before this, I think, called the the Social Network. They won best That's right. score, but I think this one is even up there for me. I Isn't, love it. Uh, how do I know that name, Trent Reznor? Isn't he in a band or something? Rob Zombie. He was his pianist. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I figured I'd. It sounded familiar. Yeah. Was, okay. <laughs> AJ number <laughs> I'm a, two. I'm gonna let that go. Uh, uh, that's fine. Uh, no, my number two is. Snowpiercer. Okay, cool. Nice. Bong Joon Ho, one of his. Um, I don't. I. I don't know his whole uh, filmography or you know repertoire of what everything he's got. Certainly, probably the first thing I ever watched of his, though. Um, but uh, you've you've got uh, Chris Evans. Um, what is his friend's name? I should have looked it up before I. I uh, he was in like Turn. Oh, great oh, show yeah. by the way. Um, and uh, so some some great actors, actresses. Uh, Ed Harris is Ed in Harris, it. Ed Harris, Jamie Bell. Jamie Bell. God, I love Jamie Tilda Bell. Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. John Hurt. So it's really it's really a piece about uh, it's a societal piece. Um, oh, definitely m- mimicking society. You can take it for what, what, it what it's is. worth, or you can dive real deep. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, but uh, essentially, the the quick the quick rundown is. Um, whatever's left of the world population. I, b- I believe what happened was the day after tomorrow happened, and then <laughs> we now have Snowpiercer. Cool. So everybody on this train is what's left of the population, and they're on this massive train that circulates around the world um, to basically keep keep it going and keep the population alive during this what's like a nuclear winter that's blasted over right. the uh, entire world world Mm -hmm. and so in the back of the train you have the working class the very kind of the the uh like low income or what have you um there's like a poor the poor society in the in the in the back and they basically start an uprising led by chris evans jamie bell and they go through um they start working their way through the cars um in this process and you start seeing that as they get further and further to the the front of the train, it's you start to see the the difference of class. Like then they get to like the middle class, and then they start to see children in like a school car, and they start to see like the upper class. Then and then you start to see like the one percent, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's this really like kind of interesting take and look uh, like at, at society essentially. And um, but there are points in this where they show the outside, and it is just. Dead, yeah. dead. Win- it just nothing lives, nothing exists, nothing is. Um, there's a point where they do like the um, upper class or, or whoever you know the authority. They do a punishment, and one of the punishments is is like they basically take this guy who stole, and they put his arm outside, and oh, it just freezes, yeah. and then they break it with a hammer. <laughs> cool, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So. It's really, really cool. It's a really, really like they, they, the way that they develop their plot and all the little things that go along with it. 
it's such a fascinating watch. And again, you can take it at face value, like you said, Mike, or you can just really deep dive into what it means, like and and the mirror of society that it has. So it's Bong, great. Yeah. Bong Joon Ho does that sort of a lot in his movies. I'm I'm kind of gathering now because his Oscar winning Parasite yeah. is literally about class. You know, there's the yes. it's that's show. what I was trying to look uh, yeah. think of as a society and class system. That's yeah. what I was trying to think of the word. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah, it's it's like literally the the characters who are trying to like live in this house in Parasite are like literally down hill from mm -hmm. uh these upper class people and it, the way that that's shown is is brilliant and obviously the the juxtaposition of that on the train the back of the car the caboose is the fucking ass of society right and then the engine is the one percent one percent it's really really good yeah bong joon ho's fantastic yeah uh bud larson's number two is bad santa and I gotta agree, that's uh, that's Christmas meets winter time. Like, it, when you, th I mean, Christmas ultimately is. We didn't really put any Christmas movies on because it's pretty mm -hmm. obvious. But yeah. like, Christmas is winter for oh, a yes, lot of people. Winter. Uh, yeah, if you hadn't seen Bad Santa, it's Mall Santa and Elf by Day, two career criminals by night. They plan to rob them all right before Christmas, but Santa grows a conscience, tries to foil their own plan, sending both of them to jail. That's a cl criminally underrated, uh, just overall movie uh, performances. Christmas, winter, whatever you want to call it. I love I love Bad Santa and I need to add that to my list this year for yeah, sure. 100%. I haven't seen it in a few years. Same. It, it's it's one that I put off for the longest time. I know. Of like, oh, Bad Santa. Oh, wow. oh yeah, let's go. And then as you <laughs> dive in, um, you realize how like far they took it, <laughs> and you're like, okay, this is pretty funny. All right, this is great. Yeah, this is this is good. I Billy Bob Thornton. Yep. Appreciate I so you. Good. I understand. Appreciate you. Um, is this is this <laughs> coming out before Elf? Uh, this will be after Elf. After Elf. Okay, so. Um, Terry Zweigoff, who made uh, Bad Santa, was going to make Elf as we as we would. No have way. Said. Yeah, well, as we would have already discussed. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, as we discussed previously. <laughs> what? <laughs> Inception. <laughs> yeah. All right. We are down to our number one. Thanks everybody for being here. We love you so much. We're gonna oh, hook yeah. you up with the number ones. We appreciate you sticking around. It it absolutely means the world to have you guys listen to these episodes, to let us just be able to have these conversations. So, yeah. again, thank you for sticking around. My number one, Out Cold. Oh, God, I'm so glad there you did is. this. I, this I, I, I even I left this to. off of my honorable mentions list because I just I had that feeling. 2001 movie, really, <laughs> listen, really not a critically acclaimed movie. I believe <laughs> this might be one of... When we do get to this, which, by the way, I will let you know, which is why I'm not going to talk too much about this. Executive producer Josh Miller has officially made this his choice for January. So we are going to deep dive on Out Cold. Coming in clutch. Coming in clutch. So Thank I'm not going to talk that, much Josh. about this, but this is this will be one of the worst critically acclaimed movies that we do. Wow. Like, critics hated this movie. Is it cheesy? Yes. But is this the movie that first introduced me to... One of my favorite actors in the entire world, comedian Zach Galifianakis. Yes, it's the first thing I I love this movie. I love the idea of being young and living in a ski town. Yeah, that's and fun. And skiing every day and partying every night with good friends and coming together for good. And yeah, this this movie, Jason London, Zach Galifianakis, David yes. Koechner, Victoria Silverstead, <laughs> Lee Majors, David Jesus. Denman. <laughs> David I, Denman is yes. amazing in this movie. Th this, I'm not going to talk much about it because uh, we will be able to do a full-blown review on it, but this is like the the ultimate wintertime movie for me. Funny, isolation, conflict, skiing, snowboarding. I love it. Ten I out of ten it. for Mike. Completely, I completely agree with you. I love it as well. I can't wait to cover it. Yep. I'm really trying to hold back right now. Okay, let's just... There's a hot tub scene. Anyway, Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. Sean, number one, what you got, man? Number one, dog. Uh, I was just watching this movie before I came here. Um, I love it so much. Uh, it's by a filmmaker called Antonio Bur Antonia Bird is a woman and starring Guy Pierce and Robert Carlyle. This is ravenous. Uh, this movie takes place during the Mexican-American War. Um, Guy Pierce plays this uh, soldier who... Um, is a kind of a war hero, but he's a war hero in, in all the wrong reasons. He was kind of a, a cowardice war hero. He uh, pretended to be dead while they were getting ambushed. And then while he, af after he was laying under all these dead bodies, he escaped and actually took this base that they took from them. Um, and so because of that, he's rewarded, but the captain or the major is, is not having it. So he sends him to 
uh, like the Sierra Nevadas to s- be stationed there as like kind of pretty much exiling him. Mm. Um, and when he gets sent here, this uh, man, mysterious man, comes to camp and played by Robert Carlyle, who essentially tells them the story of how he got there. He tells them the story of the Donner Party pretty much. Like the sky went crazy. Uh, we were stranded. We were in this cave. We didn't have anything to eat. We we went through our oxen. We went through our horses, our boots, our belts, and then we had to turn to cannibalism. And then one, this one guy just went crazy with it, and that's why I escaped because I had to leave, and so I came here. And so the whole, um, uh, gr- this whole camp, these soldiers go to where this cave is to try and find this woman who was there because you have to save the woman. Mm. Um, and it turns out maybe he was lying the the little stranger was lying um it's kind of like a a take on the wendigo uh legend and and like a native american kind of folklore monster uh which is super interesting of like eating human flesh it gives you like super super powers and makes you uh more agile and and, like can't be hurt and almost indestructible uh but it's set in the winter and uh they're they are outside in expeditions and um I love it for that reason. It's very isolated uh, in this camp, and this the performances by Guy Pearce and Robert Carlyle are unbelievable. And the the music in this is actually uh, Damon Alborn, Duh. who is uh, Blur. Gorillas, Blur and Gorillas, and Gorillas. Um, super interesting soundtrack, and it's it's so unconventional and so weird, but it fits the movie so perfectly. Uh, I love it. Cannibalism. Well, he's weird, so that makes sense. There you go. <laughs> AJ, number one, what you got, man? Um, this movie is, I, I realized how much I enjoyed this movie because I have, I've, uh, because of how much I've revisited actually, even, uh, not even during the winter, but when, when it starts to get cold, I realized I did it this year, started to get cold. I watched this movie. If you guys are a fan of like Yellowstone that's happening right now, like the big phenomenon of, of Yellowstone, you will love this movie. It's called Wind River. Hell yeah. Wind River. Have you guys seen Wind River? I've yes, never sir. seen it. Okay, so Wind River uh, is was made by Taylor Sheridan. Oh, so makes sense. It, from Yellowstone, uh, I think he directed it. Yeah, yes. he directed it. He wrote it. Like everything. So um, basically, um, and it's set in Wyoming. So you know, big country up in Wyoming. Basically, uh, Jeremy Renner plays a, a hunter, like a predator hunter like a professional predator hunter and tracker um, to, and uh, he more or less gets recruited by the FBI because somebody in their town, um, it was a, a, a girl uh, was basically found out in the uh, wilderness and they presume murdered at this point. Um, very much along the lines of um, she's a native American uh, woman. Um, there's a, kind of a, a big balance of, you know, he, Jeremy Renner's uh, a white guy and he's going into the uh, reservation and stuff and he does have a relationship with them. The FBI shows up, uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Mm-hmm. Is, they send one person up, basically, and it's Elizabeth Olsen Dances from the FBI. Wolves. You got it. Avatar? You got it. Cool. Got Thank it. you. <laughs> and so... <laughs> no! No! Okay. This is different. It's different. Uh, long story short... Um, Jeremy Renner helps Elizabeth Olsen uh, investigate this murder and and what happened to her. Um, you'll see a lot of characters or a lot of the actors and actresses actually from Yellowstone that are even yeah, in this. That makes it's sense. Great. John Bernthal has a small part in God, this. He's the best. So good. Um, but it's a great, great mystery in a cold, cold, cold weather place. Um, and to watch it all unfold, I don't want to give anything away. But man, it's. That guy has a great way of just writing and telling stories. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And um, I really think, yeah, you should definitely go watch it. Are, are you going? He's, he's just a great storyteller in the fact of, like, modern uh, contemporary westerns, like Hell or High Water. Oh, God. Is, Did he, was he involved in that? Yeah, it's, oh, it's all my him. God. It's, yeah. He's it's the man. He's then. got, like, literally his trilogy of, like, land movies, yeah. which is basically that, Wind River, and Yellowstone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, such a great storyteller, and yeah, the the fact at the end of this movie, the cold hard fact at the end of this movie, blew me the fuck away. <laughs> yeah. Because when this movie ends, it ends with like kind of a, a like a yes, percentage a tr- fact, yes. true things. It yeah. 
blew me away. So you don't learn that in history books. You, you don't. Do I don't even know what your fact is, but I know I can guess. And no one talks about it. Nobody nope. talks even about it. No, and listen. We all, when we arrived in America, we sat down at a big table and had Thanksgiving dinner with the hundred percent. Yes, that's, we did. Absolutely. That's exactly. We shook right. hands and broke bread. Yep. That's all that happened. Right. That's all that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, executive producer Bud Larson, thanks again for being here, man. We appreciate it. Very His much number so. one, spies like us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, and I and I it's, I have not seen this movie in a long time, and I think he nailed it. It's it's um, uh, Ackroyd and Chase. Oh yeah, and it's uh, some spies go through basic training regiment that they think is the real thing to save the world from nuclear nuclear devastation, but it turns out they are the decoys. There's so many funny parts. This is like classic. Those dudes comedy like John Landis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Landis movie. There's the eight doctors introductions. Doctor, 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 doctor. <laughs> yes. Chevy Chase gives a press conference and pretends to have his mic cut out while giving a speech. If you haven't seen this movie, you can already picture that. In oh, your yeah. Head, like how that would. This this is like this is a, a very wind like winter feeling movie yeah. and straight comedy. It's one of the more I'd call it one of the more lesser known movies of Chase and Ackroyd. But. This my my dad always talks about this movie. He loves this movie. So, uh, he 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 ended it all saying just these all these movies are must watches for me in the winter months. So he's got his list. We had our list. You bet. That is twenty movies for you guys to, uh, not even including the honorable mentions to think yeah. about watching this winter when it, when the long darkness yes. sets in. Uh, you just darkness. need things to do because. Nothing on Netflix is really calling your name. Pick yeah. up these movies. Settle yeah. up with a little little whiskey, little, little nippers. Yeah. You know, a little bit. Just a little nippers. Watch a movie. And warm nice. me up on the inside, and then these movies will warm me up on the outside. Yep. So. Well, we're glad you guys were here. We do have a voicemail. You can call us at 319-804-9596. Nice. Leave some thoughts on the show, feedback, movie suggestions. Here's today's voicemail. Hi, guys. It's Neil from New Jersey. First off, my state sucks. <laughs> because I can't get the whiskey delivered to my state. The whole state won't deliver alcohol. My state sucks. <laughs> Second of all, you guys' podcast are the greatest. I learned from you from Two Bears, One Cave, and mm-hmm. I binged all your episodes within a month. And That's a lot. Am I mistaken, or are there, like, no great – military movies that you guys do hmm. i'll Very even true. do like good morning vietnam with robert williams yeah full metal jacket you know like classics yeah. i was just curious if that was a thing or not but also i think we need to discuss the most nostalgic movie ever made by man the demolition man <laughs> ah, yes. starring sly and wesley snipes yes Come on. Yep. You Come can't on. get more nostalgic than that. Right. And the one-liners. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Keep up the great work. You guys make me laugh nonstop, and I love your little mini bites. You guys are awesome. Keep doing you. And, yeah, you guys are awesome. You are definitely my number one podcast. Thanks, man. So keep up the good work and enjoy. Now he's right. We nice we bro. really haven't jumped into some military movies, which is interesting. We don't enough. support the military. We don't. Mm-hmm. No, we we do not support the boys in blue or the military <laughs> or the firefighters. No, we <laughs> get out of here. We don't. Just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> we love it. Major jokes. We actually know. I I don't. Sorry, I don't have it in front of jokes. me. But so one of our executive producers has added Saving Private Ryan to the upcoming list. So okay, nice. We're gonna start diving into some of that. But yeah, I think he's right. We do need to check some of that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait. Um, yeah, Demolition Man. Demolition too. Man. What are the seashells? For? I was just gonna ask. Hey, if you can tell us what the seashells are used for, how you use the seashells, I'm all for it. Uh, yeah. Then we'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. We'll have to figure it out when we do it. Yep. Well, please go check us out at confusedbreakfast.com. Ratings on all of our movies are there. You can buy merch. You can contact us on social media. Uh, you can check everything you need to know there. But also, more importantly, you got to go to patreon.com slash confusedbreakfast, which is the reason for this bonus episode today. Yes, sir. The people there that we are so grateful for have allowed us to add this extra monthly episode. So we are going to read that name, uh, that list of names off to them. 
of these amazing people. We got to thank Robin Fawcett, Dane, Joel, Nick Marula, Mark Pryor, Kirlana, Alicia, Camden Griffith, Francisco Rivera, Cameron J, Bud Larson, Katie Beeks, Mr. and Mrs. Roommate, Kale James, Jason Davis, Sean Dixon, Emilio Perez, Skylar Brunson, Jordan Hooten, Brenna Meisner, Willie Cox III, Janelle Lewis, Joe Thomas, Chris Diaro, Marshall G, Mitch Kavanaugh, Josh Miller, Con Dumb, J Jason Botsford, <laughs> Chris Pryor, Paul Diaro, Jason Hahn, Travis Scanlon, Gary McCarthy, Corey Vaughn, Ranger Rick, and Subaloo, Damian Zemek, Zachary Huron, Dallas B, Revis, David Wagoneer, Jenny Wilson, Tim Nash, Mike Zacher, Dwayne Van, Robert Venz, Joey Piamonte, David Waters, Alan Cross, Negaduck, Zero Phonic, Amy N, Ryan O, David Gould, John Devlin, Zachary Jones, Seth Murray, Tina Hansen, Lilo, Dallas Multipass, Lance Davis, Jesse Anderson. We also got Mike being Mike, Dale Prestupia. Derek For Real, Mike Wheeler, Andrew Sawtell, Mike Oxhard, Garrett Layoff, Aaron Baker, Ryan Grabsky, Michael Nash, Adam Bathin, Bathoon, Ryan Weaver, Quentin Moore, Joseph Morris, Zach Evans, Justin Woolley, Todd Fajot, Jared Bushman, Melinda Miller, Luke Bitus, mm. Bitus. I gave you all the hard ones. Shadow X Viking, Rachel yeah, Heinz, yeah, uh, Bailey Rome Murky, Tyler Dark, John Miller, <laughs> Caleb Campson, Dean Roan, Austin Hartman, Jason Ruby, Rod Rogers. <laughs> All right. Nice. Chris M., Cody Kirker, Chris Clemen, Louis Lewinsky. Lani Laniuski. Alexandra Hemingway, the writer. Starling, Jessica Helvenka. Helvenka. Hel 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 Helvenka. Tanner Gray, Quincy Mullen, David Amodai. Matthew Rosendahl, John Martinez, Jackson M., Jamie Young, Spaceballs, the username, Aaron Richard Harding. And do not forget, we've still got Brandon Anderson, Captain Chunk, Bryant Wayland, Jacob Stahl, Carson Kruger, Aaron Hamblin, Alex Navarro, Richard Bursiaga, Stephen Andrew Gibson, Peter Fitz, Jay Bender, Stephen Gatos, Steve Bland, Andy M., Chris Nelson, Steve Galbraith, Sean. Matt Cruz, Sean Galbraith. Yeah, we got. Don't forget Sean, dude. <laughs> Sean Galbraith, Matt Cruz, Terry Pyatt, Kyle Donnelly, Kyle Eberly, Tyler Kennep, Jose Lush, Robert Ross, Steve Prim, Jacob Collins, Max W, Lee Rash, Michael May, Trent Crutcher, Austin Pal Palazzari, Father Pena, Domin Brown, Travis Ferris, Mister and Mrs. Beers. <laughs> 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 Ronnie, Midnight Rider, Ronnie, and Midnight Rider, <laughs> Todd, Todd Zutenhorst, Mindy Zealous, Emma Page, Megan, Damian Zemek, Mitchell Lundy, Aaron George, Cody Gertis, Zachary Schil Schild, <laughs> Michelle Music, Josh Baxter, Max Went, Mo Muzak, Diggity Dave, <laughs> the guy, uh, Jay McGrath, Grant Trickle, Anthony Davis, and Anthony Fenstra. Oh. You're the best around. around. I, I ran out of sound bites out here. We have too many <laughs> things it. to do in there. You guys, we love you. We will catch you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.